rolling options and how it actually works. I thought we were past this. I really thought we were on to bigger and better things. And then when I was looking for my next video idea, I just threw into YouTube rolling options. And I want to show you something because it's actually scary. The amount of misinformation around this concept is staggering and it promotes some of the most unhealthy options trading habits that exist. So I want to walk you through exactly what I'm seeing, why it's blatantly wrong, and then I'm going to walk you through in depth what rolling options actually is. So at the end of the video, there's a little quiz that I want to see if you're following along and staying up to speed. So what's up, everybody? Eric here. Welcome back to all the outliers. Shout out to the Patreon family. You guys make content like this possible. And let's talk about rolling some options, hopefully for the last time. I doubt it, though, if we're being honest. OK, so as I said, I threw rolling options into Google. I'm not trying to pick on nobody. I literally put in the words rolling options. And these are the first two videos that popped up for me. The first one says option rolling strategy is free money. How to roll options for beginners free money. That's fucking news to me. That sounds pretty sick, but I can't turn down free money. I'll have to check that video out. And then the second video here is avoid losses by rolling options. That also sounds pretty fucking sick to me too. Both of these seem great from a new trader perspective who doesn't want free money and who doesn't want to avoid losses, which if you remember, loss aversion is a massive psychological function of all human beings. But traders really face this on a regular basis. This is biological in nature. But anyways, without running too far down that rabbit hole, what's going on here? What are we seeing? Well, let's check out a couple things on Reddit. The first one here says rolling in iron condor. I'm going to skip a couple lines and then it says, I consider the amount currently showing as a loss in quotations. Then when we look down here, it says I would look for the credit at sell to open to be higher than the loss plus debit to close. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down here so far, but if not, let's take a look at another one here. Infinitely rolling of short options. I open a Tesla short put. It's underwater. This person says, I know this comes up often, but people always seem to talk about in the point of view of a full-time trader, essentially saying that there's an opportunity cost, which is accurate. And then it says majority of the people don't have the time, skill, or patience to do the DD. At least I sure do not. Uh, that's hilarious. But then it says for someone that is just looking for a decent trade once in a while and at least happy with the profit, which is the wrong mindset, mind you, again, loss aversion. That is what you're seeing laced through all of this. Avoid losses. This person can't even say the fucking word loss without quotes around it because that's, that's subconscious pain, literally, that's going through there. They cannot reconcile some of the actual details of rolling options, which is just wild to me. And then this person's talking about looking for decent trades once in a while and happy with the profit loss aversion. And again, what stops them from rolling infinitely further for a credit until you can get out with a net gain or at worst a small loss? And my favorite part is in when it says infinite rolling, it says further out of the money for more time or both. Well, at the end of this video, you're going to know the definitive answers to all of these and how they are blatantly wrong. And I'm not even going to tell you how they're blatantly wrong just yet. We're going to answer it for yourself at the end. But with all of that, let's move on now to our next topic. I want to talk about the anatomy of a role. What is a rolled option? Because what you just saw up there was a lot of bullshit about what rolling options really isn't. So I'm going to tell you exactly what it is, and it's going to be super short and sweet, and it's probably going to make a lot of you upset because it's nothing sexy. Down here in the bottom left, we have trade one entry, trade two exit, trade three entry. Where did the roll happen here? Right there. That's it. That's it. That's all a roll is. It is a closing trade that is mentally tied to an opening trade. The reason why I say mentally is because your broker does not track rolls. Your broker doesn't give a shit about a rolled position. So when we're talking about rolling options, it literally 
literally is just a convenience based concept, meaning what's actually happening is we are closing a trade. We are closing trade one, which was the entry. Trade two is the exit for trade one. We are out of this position. This position is closed and we are opening up a brand new one standalone trade. And what we're doing is linking the accounting to this trade. Loss aversion again, that's the whole purpose of this. It's convenience based, but really the short answer here is what is a role? It's just when we close a trade and we open up a new one. Very frequently, it's gonna be either the same strike option, the same type of option, like those kinds of details typically are what carries over. So if you sell a put and then you buy that put back and then you sell another put in the same product, maybe it's a different expiration, maybe it's a different strike, but that's what we're considering a role in general. So let's get into the details now. I know this is the part that nobody really likes. It kind of sucks because we have to put on our thinking cap, but this is actually why the details matter. So let's take a look. We have an example. Trade one. We sold to open a 10 put at a dollar. Keeping it simple, I'm an idiot. It's easier for me to do math with even numbers. These numbers really aren't super likely, but anyways. So trade one, we sold to open a 10 put collecting a dollar. Trade two, we bought to close that put at $2. So for those at home, what's happened so far? What have we done? Well, on this trade one, we collected a credit. On trade two, we closed our position for a $200 debit. Let's math for Marines here. Let's get through this together. So this is $100 coming in. This is one $200 going out the door. So what's just happened is we realized a $100 loss. We lost $100. I can't put it any more plainly than that. A lot of people struggle with that. But anyways, let's take a look at what you're seeing here. Avoid losses by rolling options. Okay, well, by my, again, rudimentary math, that's not at all what's occurred here. Same thing over here with the loss in quotations. These don't look like they're in quotations to me. It looks like that's a really realized loss on the books. Now, what we're going to talk about is what these people actually mean, what they actually are attempting to convey, albeit poorly. So this is exactly what's occurred so far. We simply have lost $100. Okay, fine. That point is now beaten to a dead pulp. Now the roll. If you remember, the roll occurs between two, trade two, trade three. Here's trade two. Here's trade three. Here's our roll. So now we sold to open whatever. It doesn't matter we'll just call it the same the 10 put you can roll out you can roll out and up out and down meaning when we say out it means adding days to expiration going out in time up or down just means that's where you're moving your strike compared to where you are at so very frequently if you sold a put that's bullish we want it to go up and if it's challenged, technically, that's when we are going to be rolling these kinds of options. We get into a whole game of words because realistically, you can roll a profitable trade too. But in kind of common parlance, when we're using the terms, it's generally associated with a losing trade that we're rolling. But you can roll a winning trade. Again, it doesn't matter if this trade here comes down at a profit or a loss. Literally, the roll is just this transaction. That's it. So anyways, trade three, we sold to open. Now we collected $3. So what's happened now? Well, we took in $300. Before this $300, we had a $100 loss on the books. So now we have the opportunity to make $200. The opportunity. Notice how I phrase it that way very purposefully because this is an unrealized position. It's an open trade. This is an unrealized game. So we have collected enough money to result in what we would call a net credit. And this is exactly what rolling tends to look like if we're executing it kind of to try to enhance our positions. Now, I want to take a quick moment and let you all know that I like rolling. Rolling is a fantastic approach to trading options, but it is so important to actually understand what it is and acknowledge the transactions as they're occurring. So I want to help us understand that that point just a little bit more. So over here, I have a question for you. Where is the break even premium? So if we sold this option for $3, what does this need to be trading at in order for us to be flat on this series of transactions? If you know the answer, throw it in the comments below. And if you don't, that's cool. I'm gonna show you the answer. It's $2 because what's happened here is we sold to open this option again for $3. We want to make $100 to get back to break even. So if this decreases from three to two, you now have a $100 unrealized gain. That brings you to break even on the position. 
So on this series of trades, if in trade three, this option now is trading at $2, you are at break even. As soon as it falls below $2, you are now in profit and your maximum profit potential, again, in this rolled trade is up to $200. So that's exactly where the money's going. Now let's do some accounting because this is the part that a lot of people fuck up. We need to understand the difference between net liquidating value and cash and sweep. If you are unsure what those terms mean, simply put, net liquidating value is if you flattened your entire account, your entire portfolio right now, that's how much it's worth. Cash and sweep is how much cash you have sitting in your account. The part that trips people up is your cash and sweep can be greater than your net lick. Sounds confusing. We're going to get to the bottom of it right now. So let's say you have a $1,000 account. We have trade one here that we sold to open that put for a dollar. So our net lick is still $1,000. Nothing has changed. This net lick will change as the value of this opened trade changes. But at the onset, nothing's changed. However, we've collected $100. Your cash and sweep is now $1,100. Trade two, our net lick is now $900. We realize a $100 loss. It's gone. Your cash and sweep is now also $900. You just lost $100. Why is this not $1,000 in your cash and sweep? Because you closed it for $200. So you give back your dollar and then you give another dollar because it's $2. So this is exactly how the money is moving in your account. So now for trade three, your net lick is still $900. This is, an, uh, this is a realized loss. This is now an open trade. So as this trade moves around, your net lick will move around. Your cash and sweep is going to remain steady at $1,200. Why $1,200? Because you collected 300 bucks. This is how the money is moving in your account. So if you're not totally understanding what's going on here, your cash and sweep is just holding money. That can be all over the place. Your net lick is going to be tied to the value of your open positions as they move around. So as you book this loss, we booked a loss. Notice how after you rolled your option, your cash and sweep is up. It's up to $1,200, but your net lick is down at $900. This is exactly why you will be unable to roll an option into perpetuity. Okay. Quiz time. Does rolling avoid losses? Yes or no? It doesn't. What traders like this are attempting to capitalize on is the profit potential down the line, but they're crossing two very important streams of money, unrealized gains and realized gains. So as you follow through that math that we just did together, in no way, shape or form does rolling avoid losses. It realizes the value of the trade. That's exactly what's going on here. Next, can you roll forever? No, you can roll for a really long time. You cannot roll forever. Again, I encourage you to go back to that section that we went through the math because what's happening is each time you roll for a loss, your net liquidating value is slowly getting trimmed down because the value of the positions have gone down as you're flattening them. So sooner or later, you might have a giant cash and sweep vehicle, a ton of money in there, but it's all tied to an open trade that may or may not actually be in profit. And sooner or later, you can become insolvent. Your broker can say, hey, you're not meeting your margin requirements. You can't put that trade on. Now you have to book the whole thing at a loss. What is expiration liquidity? This is an important concept because a lot of traders, you have to be careful how far out in time you roll. Essentially, expiration liquidity is the idea that the closer you are to expiration, the more options there are available because there's a lot of liquidity in those options. That's where most people are trading. So what that means is if you're trading SPX and you go out zero days, one day, two day, three day, four four day, five day, seven day, 10 day. Sooner or later, as you get further out in time, it's gonna go from 45 days to 60 days to 70 days. So instead of being in one day increments, the further out in time you go, the greater the days to expiration becomes between the subsequent expiration cycles. This becomes a problem because the idea of rolling for a credit as you fall super far in the money means you have to go super far out in time. And then all of a sudden you might have to roll out 180 days in order to get a 
credit even at the same strike. So it's important to understand that expiration liquidity becomes an important concept when you're rolling options. The last one, this is kind of a trick question. I'll give it to you up front, but we can always roll up or down, yes or no. Can you always roll up or down, yes or no? Yes, you can, there are no rules. So if we go back to the example trade that I gave you, you can absolutely choose to roll this 10 put up or down. You can always roll up or down. It doesn't always make sense. The goal is to try and roll for a credit or break even if you have to, but you can always roll any direction you want. It just might be for a debit and you might be locking in a loss if you're not capturing the math appropriately. So. I hope you passed that exam. I have a couple other videos that go through rolling options in depth if you need a refresh, but hopefully this is the last time we gotta go through one of these because there are a lot of nuances in strategy, but this is how the math works. And that's the important part because most people get this wrong because of loss aversion and because they're preying on a psychological function where people don't like having losing trades and the idea of free money, who doesn't? Don't forget, like, subscribe, be an outlier. I'll see you guys later.